CG is. What's up? Welcome to episode 31 of the Creation Grounds. I'm very excited to welcome our next guest. He is part of the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, part of the Divine Nine. His name is Sean Freeman, and he is born to entertain and to serve. In this episode, we touch on some of those attributes that he has in the entertainment as well as service. He is originally from Alabama. I met this brother when he first came to New York. I think it was his first time. If not his first time, I think it was his first um, reading that he did in New York. We connected there, we kept in touch, and he's solid. Right now he's in Atlanta. So on this podcast, we talk about, in his eyes, the differences between the Atlanta market and the New York market for any actors who are trying to juggle between where they wanna be. Maybe this podcast will offer you some insight um, on your education on where you wanna be. In this episode, we talk about some of the things that he has going on. He has a lot going on. He was just recently, just recently, Diction, just recently on set with Light Skin Keisha, DC Young Fly, and D Baines in Atlanta, tearing it up in a music video um, scene. So check him out. He has an interview with the magazine right now that I think has come out already as um, when this interview comes out for this podcast. But check him out. He's on social media. He drops that tag in this episode. And I hope this episode is of some service to you. Introducing Sean Freeman. Another episode of Creation Grounds. I'm very pleased to welcome my next guest. His name is Sean Freeman. How you doing, Sean? Hey, man. Good morning. Good afternoon. What's up? What's up? Thanks what's, for having me, man. What's up? So uh, let's start with something very, very simple. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from? Where I'm from? I'm from a small city in uh, Alabama called Ozark, Alabama. Pretty sure you've never heard of it, but uh, <laughs> it exists. Yeah, man, it's probably a, a population of a few thousand. And um, yeah, I am, I don't know, like, I'm at my core. I'm just like an entertainer. I'm an artist, man. I'm a creative. And uh, outside of that, it's all about, you know, providing service and opportunities and influencing, like, kids, the young people, man. So everything is entertainment and service. That's me. Dope. So Ozark, Alabama, what do you love most about having grown up in Alabama? Um, all right, I'm going to back it up real quick. So my, like growing up, you know, my whole background, my whole, all my experiences being from Alabama, I wasn't really appreciative of it. You know what I mean? Um, it took me to like leave and go to a bigger city such as, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and later on New York city, <clears throat> which is where I met you. Shout out. Yep. Um, uh, it took me to move out and, you know, venture off in life to appreciate my little, you know, quote unquote, small, humble beginnings. And so, um, in that aspect, like what I now love most about growing up in the South in Alabama, um, is like the simplicity of it all, man. Like I could have just literally walked outside barefoot and like on a dirt road and been fine and not been stared at like I was a crazy man, you know, or, um, going to the grocery store and some random stranger tapping me on my shoulder and being like, excuse me, sweetie, let me, let me get that snicker bar. You know, in New York, that would never happen. Right. Somebody trying to pop the trunk and kill you if they, you know, but Stuff like that, man. It was just very simplistic and grounded and like it was this connected web, like family oriented type of environment and I really appreciated that. That's dope. So what would you yeah, say man. what would you say your uh, favorite memory from childhood would be? Um favorite memory. My favorite memory. Uh I don't know what's my favorite memory, honestly, but two things always like kinda come to mind, they're like recurring always. Is uh one is this this um what was it? It was a uh, what is it called? A, not a playhouse. What is it? A treehouse. Yeah, yeah. Me and my brothers, um, <laughs> me and my brothers, Rodney and Demise, we had like this treehouse that we kind of built in between this fence and this tree, and we had like a tire swing. We had like different platforms. <laughs> we had like a rug, so we were really proud of that treehouse. And um, so and to this day, I'm 30 years old today, man, and I still think about that treehouse from my childhood. It just feels good when I think about that that whole period in life. That's and um, two, it was uh, I think I was in the third grade. <laughs> like that was one of my most favorite you know eras in life. Uh, we used to watch what was it called? Magic School Bus. Oh, whenever Magic it was, School Bus. Yeah, man, Magic School Bus. <laughs> whenever it was raining and we couldn't go outside, I just really remember those times, man. It was great. That's dope. So you you yeah. have two brothers. Are you the oldest, middle, youngest? I am the second oldest of my mother's kids. She has six. I'm the second oldest. Yes, sir. Cool. And, yeah, man. So you're an entertainer. You're all about service. What would you say your top five movies or TV shows of all time would are? Woo. Um. All right, my top five. My top five. All right, 
number one, um, actually, no particular order, man, because it always it changes. But I would have to say uh, the great debaters. You know, starring Denzel Washington. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Him and Nate Parker and uh, I think that's his name. And uh, Journey Smollett. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. The Great Debaters. Uh, um, Freedom Writers, starring Hilary Swank. Yeah. Yeah, when she was like, you know, like this this lady who came in and kind of like got the students back on track. Um, Holes, man, starring Shia LaBeouf. Digging up, oh, oh. Oh, that, I read that book. That's a throwback right there. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. <laughs> I love that. I love that movie and the book. Um, uh, a raisin in the sun, man. Classic. Whew, yes, sir. I'm talking about Lorraine Hansberry's play on Broadway, and I'm talking about the TV adaptation star P Diddy. Oh, P Diddy. I thought you were talking about the Sydney Portier. You talking about the P Diddy? Oh, manager? oh, I'm talking about every one of them, brother. Like that is <laughs> my like starring Sydney Portier at first, starring uh, Danny Glover later on in the uh, late '80s and '90s. Denzel Washington's uh, portrayal and Diddy's, all of them. Okay. Yes, sir. And lastly, I think like it's a tie between Hey Arnold and like Recess. I don't know one of them. Ooh, Hey Arnold's <laughs> taking that man. Yeah. Hey <laughs> so yeah. you're an alpha, and you mentioned that you you community oh, service. Six. It means so much to you. How, how does that mean? Like even in the the choices that you made with uh, the Hillary Swank Freedom Riders. These mm-hmm. movies like kind of inspirational, encouraging, you know, like community mm-hmm. service. What does community service mean to you and how does it align with who you are at your core? What does it mean? Um, I don't know. I, I, I know it may sound kind of cheesy, but it's what I feel. Um, I think no matter anybody's goal, like if they want to be a dang basketball player or a, I don't know, a, a coach or a, a a lawyer, doctor, everyone kind of has this root, this underlying, like, motivation to, like, help people, to serve people, you know what I mean? Mm. And um, to whatever capacity. And so in that regard, not so much of the community service, but just being a service, being a helping hand, um, that means a lot to me, you know? Um, I think it's something to take pride in, you know? And um, so that kind of, uh, I don't know, that, that, that kind of is aligned with who I am at my core. I keep saying that, but, like, that's my... That's my thing all 2019. Like, does it align with my core? Is this who I really am in my core, you know? And, um, yeah, I think it's something to take pride in. I, um, I don't know. I, I think it's as simple as that. I think a lot of times we try to we try to answer questions, like, in this profound way. But I think some things are just simple, man. I think service is just important. And we all should do it. That's dope. Yeah. So, so tell me about the day that you pledge and how it's impacted your lives and the lives around you, ultimately. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so I crossed, uh, Saturday, November the 11th, 2017, me and my three other line brothers, there's four of us. Um, that <laughs> crazy thing is I, like, I knew it was happening, but I couldn't, it didn't re- really become a reality for me until like, I don't know, a few weeks later, like once I, actually a few months later when I attended my first uh, district convention, I think that was March of 2018, um, and I know that sounds goofy, but I don't know. Like, I wanted to be an alpha since I was in like the eleventh grade. I was like sixteen, and so to finally cross at the age of like 29, 28, um, I don't know. I just couldn't believe it actually happened. Like even though I was in the circle, you know, uh, hands joined, you know, and linked with like the rest of my big brothers and my pro fights and everyone who was down visiting, I just couldn't believe it actually happened. So the actual day we we quote unquote pledged, the day we crossed. I don't know. I was excited, but it didn't seem real. <laughs> yeah. I'm being honest about it, man. Um, but I can't say uh, since then that um, it's been one of the greatest things that's happened to me. You know, um, since then, like, a lot has become more clear. And I don't know. I just consider it to be a privilege to be amongst so many, like, genuine brothers who share this, this common core, you know, set of values. And we've gone through, like, the same maturation process, in a sense. And um, I don't know. I, I just learned a lot of important life lessons. <laughs> just to give you a little sprinkle, I've just learned a lot of good stuff there. I, mean, I think it's made me a better person. In just that one year? Um, one year? No, it's been two. Two, two years, yeah. Yes, sir. That's awesome, yeah, man. man. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I wouldn't say that it. I don't know if this is just a rebel in me. I don't know, but I wouldn't say that it made me because I think the whole human experience is vast, man. Like a lot of different things. Mentors have kind of contributed to who I am. My fraternities contributed to who I am. You know different setbacks have but um 
Alpha has definitely single handedly made me a better person, a clearer person, you know, a more intentional person for sure. You mentioned um, that you had wanted to do that since the 11th grade. What about Alpha's really kind of appealed to you? Um, I mean, at first it was shallow. I think <laughs> as most kids, it was just like they seemed cool. Anytime I saw an Alpha, they had like, you know, they had on the suit or the tie or they presented themselves in a very like groomed, grown man type of fashion. Um, I, like, that appealed to me. Um, one of my high school mentors was an Alpha. <clears throat> Martin Luther King Jr. and W.B. Du Bois uh, were like my biggest figures in the world when we talked about like black history and stuff. And so when I learned they were alpha men, I'm like, yo, what's up with this alpha thing, man? You know? <laughs> so, uh, so um, yeah, it, I think it was the movie Stump the Yard. Mm -hmm. Stump, Stump the Yard starring Columbus Short. And there was a scene in there, I never, never forget it. He was walking through like this, some type of cottage, and it had like a lot of different like exemplary fig, exemplary figures on the wall and they were all part of like uh bglo's black greek letter organizations and i'm like i'm seeing great alpha man i'm like yo i want to be a part of those ranks one day and so that really kind of sparked my interest at an early age that's dope man yeah. um what what don't people know about sean freeman that you wish they did um wow uh that's crazy, man. All the other questions you asked me, like, I just had an answer for it, but <laughs> that's the <laughs> question. I don't know. Um, what are people? What, what's a, what's a, what's a goal wish. or dream that you have? Um, yeah, I, okay, okay, that, that's, that's, that's better. Um, I, oh, Lord, why am I stuck right now? Um, I think I, I don't know. I, I, I've had this weird fantasy quote unquote goal of being, becoming a mayor one day. <laughs> and I, I, I most recently shared it with my best friend, Ashley uh, Johnson. Um, and not even to be playful, to be honest about it. Like one day when I feel like I've achieved, like, you know, I've become a college professor or I've written a book and I've been close to winning an Oscar, I actually won it. You know, like at the end of all that stuff, like when I feel comfortable, like I can actually move around and do something else, I would like to get into politics a little more, even if it's like city councilman or some type of position in my city to kind of really directly affect change. I can see it. I yeah, see man. It. You know, it goes into, it ties into that, uh, the service. Yeah, I guess so. So, uh, what are you most proud of in your life right now? Um, congrats on kind of off air. We were talking about your magazine interview. That's that's dope. Um, so congratulations to you for that. What else, if not that, are you most proud of in your life right now? Um, yeah, like you said, I, like I just had an interview with a popular magazine in Atlanta. Um, outside of acting and the roles I've been getting, praise God, man. Um, I think I'm most proud of my heart. <laughs> they may sound like a bunch of baloney, but that's beautiful. Um, man. Hey, thank you, brother. Yeah. Um, thanks, Aaron. It's just I don't know. I think when I became thirty, like when I turned thirty back in May, <laughs> like this light bulb. Are, are you thirty yet? Yeah, yeah, man. I've been thirty since March. Hey, <laughs> I got you by a couple yes, sir. months. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I, well, maybe you can you can relate. Like at thirty, just this ball popped on. I'm like, yo, life is precious. It is not gonna always be here. And like, I started to really like consciously make the effort to like be more observant of my surroundings and life and even different like opportunities I've had I'm just better connecting with like people and to be totally honest the people that I've always judged like those who have been in jail or incarcerated or those who are from the hood or those who have like poor grammar just certain stuff that's so stupid to me now that I've always kind of went like dude what are you like who are you and I had to really check myself in my heart I'm like if I really want to be this great you know, servant leader in the world, man. Like, how can I be judging? Not everyone. I don't have an extreme judgment of heart. But to a degree, like, you can't carry out this judgment. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to serve these people. It doesn't make sense. And I feel like when I really made a decision to, like, really be who I'm supposed to be, as Oprah says it, it's like God has been showing me so many things. And my heart is just starting to get bigger. And that is what I'm most proud of, man. That's great. Yeah. So in addition to being this great servant leader... I'm not you're, a great servant leader yet. <laughs> man, you got to speak it into existence, man. We're we claiming yeah, that. Yeah, we're, we're working on it. Working on it. <laughs> so you're also an entertainer. We can say that. Yes, so, sir. So tell me about the day that you decided you wanted to act. When? What, what was that day? What was the moment? Man, out of the womb. I, I got out of the womb. Uh, 
uh, doing a, a Harry Belafonte uh, monologue. I feel you, man. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, I um, uh, I don't know. I I was this is so I, I speaking to you has really like made me realize like, dude, I really do talk about service and people a lot. I didn't even recognize that until today. But um, I was at the Boys and Girls Club as a kid. Um, <clears throat> that was like my safe haven growing up. Um, and I was like in the singing group and the dancing group. Uh, well, I don't know. I just, I think I found my niche, like this interest, like way early on, like six years old, seven years old. Um, but it wasn't until I like college graduation was nearing and stuff and everyone like on social media and these great thinkers and philosophers and I don't know, just really promising people, um, <clears throat> Uh, prominent people, excuse me, they started talking about stuff like, you know, making the life you want and, you know, this life is yours, like, really starting to challenge the way I saw my life and how I could, you know, kind of, I don't know, mold it into what I wanted it to be. And that's when I finally said, okay, I don't really think I want a nine to five or this traditional conventional route. I want to do what I think I'm naturally gifted at, which is acting. And so, in 2014, I made a decision to really stick with it and just pursue it professionally, man. You've been having some great success. Uh, I know we met in NYC, so you got a taste of the NYC acting market, and now you're currently yeah. based in Atlanta. Um, and Tyler Perry's doing, you know, that, that he just had his opening down there. Mm -hmm. What What's appealing about each, and what do you wish could be better in each? Because I'm mostly, ba I've only been based in New York, so I have no New experience York. of Atlanta. Um, yeah. You kind of, you've dipped into both. Um, so what's the appealing yeah. about each, and what could each um, be better at? Uh, did you um, I can only speak, well, when I say this is only in reference to, like, it only pertains to actor actors, if that makes sense, like, those who are truly about the craft, I'm going to speak to that audience when I say this, um, if you are true about the craft, I would say New York, uh, quote, unquote, it has, like, a pro, like, as far as pro and cons, um, the pro about New York is, like, a lot of it is based in theater, and I really think that that kind of is, like, the groundwork that needs to be you know, laid, and people really learn how to learn the chops. I think, I just think people who have a theater background are better actors, they're more well-rounded. Well, well and so in that aspect, I think New York is like winning in that category, because when I go to Atlanta, most people have like little to no theater experience, and I kind of see the, the contrast and like the work that they put in and i hope that does not sound shady at all because it's not what i'm saying i'm just saying that it seems to be like a, a more skilled type of actor that comes out of new york in my in my uh in my opinion however uh, for people who just want to i don't know get their feet wet quicker it seems like atlanta is like a smaller market um and it's a tighter market so if you just come down to atlanta and like i think within a week you would probably like book some role in like a student film or some independent movie going out so i don't know i think basically to, to put it uh, simply training and becoming a really skillful performer i really would like recommend people to go to new york for that but when you get ready to dive into the business and really get your feet wet i say atlanta is probably the place uh, place to go have things shifted since the new tyler perry announcement like a yeah. week or two ago things it's like buzzing down there now right I guess so, but I wouldn't really put that all in Tyler Perry. I think that's just in general. Um, yeah, that, that, that's another conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I, I think he's become like this, this. I don't know. This is like savior, savior to Black Hollywood. Like everyone's trying to be on Tyler Perry's set, which is cool. But I'm like, there are so many more Avas and Spikes and Spielbergs. Like Tyler can't do it all on his all on his own. Like there's still other people people could work with in Atlanta. You know what I mean? Philly. So. Yeah. Does having activities outside of acting, you you you, you kind of, to me, you have this uh, very well-rounded kind of thing going on for you. You're serving. You're 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 about kids and education, and you have you want to get into politics. You want to do all these different things. Um, do do you think that having these activities outside of acting, you know, frat life, uh, help you become a better actor? And if so, how? <coughs> Sorry, man, I had to get it out. No, I feel you, man. Go ahead and get <laughs> go ahead and release. <laughs> hey, that's hey, that's all a part of my. About I'm not. I'm not like editing that man. out. That's got to stay. Hey, keep it in there, man. I was gonna say that's the part. That's that's all me chasing my freedom, man. That's, that's that real. His name Sean Freeman. I'm like, yo, I might burp in an interview, and I'm not about to apologize about it, bro. <laughs> it is what it is. But now, um, uh, uh, give me.
give me your question one more time, please. So does having activities outside of acting, like with the frat, oh, yeah. frat life, politics, all these different kinds of things help you become a better actor? And if so, how? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, ultimately, acting, you know, well, my definition of it anyway, is like, you know, recreating, imitating life, real life. Um, if one hasn't, like, really explored and discovered and developed life, like a full life, they really can't, in my opinion, you know, portray these characters as well as someone who has, you know. Um, I mean, I may be into I may be getting into, my interest in politics are growing. I'm not going to be pretentious and say, like, I'm just, oh, I'm always reading about politics. But my interest in politics are growing, you know, music and acting and all these things. But at the same time, I like to go to my country cousin's house and play spades and drink a beer. You know, I like to, you know, I, I, I'm well-rounded in that, that aspect, you know. I've had um, a lot of low points in life, you know, that I don't want to get into at the moment. I've had a lot of high points, you know. I've met a lot of people from a lot of places, and, um, I think that kind of helps a person know where to pull from in certain performances. And, you know, they have like a point of reference. Whereas someone who kind of has had like this one track road, not, not too many, you know, experiences, they can't really, you know, in my opinion, be authentic in those roles because they don't really have it to pull from. Right. Yeah, man. What does black boy joy mean to you and how do you bring it to your life every day? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm still figuring that, that out. Uh, I have like an understanding of what people, what it means to people, what it means to other people. But for me, um, I don't know. I just think it means a black, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just feel like it first takes a black boy, um, <laughs> such as myself, <laughs> and having joy. I'm like, okay, black boy joy. Hmm. Maybe that means a black boy finding fulfillment you know, and the things that he really, you know, genuinely values and appreciates is kind of like a rebellious thing to me. Like, we know what it is supposed to mean to be a black man in America as far as, like, be tough mm -hmm. and be strict and show no emotion and do these types of jobs and stuff like that. But it's like, I don't know. I think it's like a, a beautiful, like, soul rebellious type of movement where people are just, I don't know, being themselves and really trying to get out of life with what it has to offer and just being happy with it, man. So I try to, I try to fly, find my black boy joy as much as I can. If you could place a billboard or a model in Times Square or even in your hometown, hometown, uh, yeah. what would it say and why? Make your money, man. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Make your money. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, you're uh, Charles Gambino. Yeah. You know, I saw it. Shout out. Um, gonna get deep on this one i ain't gonna lie to you i i would say something like be courageous be prepared and be free like, be courageous be prepared be free love that yeah man so yeah. tell me about your experience creating sam for the psych department at clayton state how did you mm -hmm. prepare for that role <sighs> um i got that script Literally, I, I know a lot of people get scripts at the last minute, but I got that at the last minute. Like, I think it was around 9.45 that night, and our call time was like 8 o'clock the following morning. So I literally had zero time to prepare for it. I was learning lines on set, man. So um, I really, to be honest, I just kind of was going with the flow. Um, I was trying to be true to the character as best as I could, man. Um, I, I got to give a lot of credit to the director, Chandra McDonald. She's amazed, man. You probably want to work with her when you come to Atlanta. I might put you on that. But, uh, I mean, just knowing your skill set and like what you do, I think you guys would be a really good pair. But, um, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I thought about, you know, certain individuals in my life who I've thought at one way or another may have like dealt with mental health problems or who had mental issues. And so I tried to stay as uh, true to that as I could. You know, I didn't really have a lot of time to, and I probably should admit this, but I didn't have a lot of time to like figure out like exactly what was this and how did it, how did it, how did it make him tick and how did he move? I just know there was a regular guy who was panicked and had a lot of anxiety and he was not happy with life, man. And so I tried to pull from what I knew of that. And I think it ended up being pretty cool. Yeah, it was, it was good, man. It was, um, yeah. production quality was great and you did a great, it was a great performance. Especially knowing that you only had like 
a couple hours doing that. So kudos. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks. Um, what what projects are you working on now? What projects do you want to work on in the future? Oh man, I'm gonna start with the future. Like if I could be Walter Lee younger in a raisin in the sun. <laughs> not today but like i don't know like maybe around the age of 40 plus like i would i would die happy man i i would love to work after that but if i could get that role on broadway if they ever brought that back that that's it like that's all i want to do in my life is play watch Lee, Young, man. <laughs> and um yeah i think i would be like fulfilled and stamped um as far as what i'm working on now i am shooting two projects uh i'm shooting a feature well, I'm starting. I'm lead, leading a feature uh, called No Perfect Love. We've been shooting it for a few months now. Um, and also an Atlanta-based series. Uh, I, call it, I call it an extended pilot, but <laughs> it's an Atlanta-based series. And it's called Cuffing Season. We've been shooting <laughs> that for a few months, man. Yeah, and I'm, I'm the lead in both. Um, and it's, they're totally contrasting. Cuffing Season is like, I'm this quirky, corny player who's trying to bag a lot of girls, and I'm having no luck. And no perfect love. I'm like this, the struggling spouse who's trying to make my marriage work, man. So we just we get it in, and I'm having fun with it. That range, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What excites you most about your life and career right now? Um, what excites me most? I don't know. I guess it's that it's it's always been a reality for me, but. I guess, like with anything, the, the more progress you make, it really becomes like a, a more reality. Like I can feel like that. That I don't know. I don't think there's a destination I have in mind, but whatever it is, that's like quote unquote that big break. It just feels so close now, and I don't know. It's just fulfilling because I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, not only getting a return on my investment as far as like all the work I put in, but I don't know. It just makes me feel good to know that I've set a goal and it's like I've stuck with it and I'm still pursuing that thing so I don't know I guess it's the biggest thing right now is just this pride that I'm feeling like man I'm doing this and I'm I'm not slowing down with it you know I feel you yeah I ask all my guests this mm-hmm. when you think of the word creative who comes to mind for you and why creative um well when you just ask it uh Robin Williams came to mind <laughs> if you would have asked me that yesterday maybe somebody else would have gone to mind <laughs> I don't know. Robin Robin Williams came to mind just then. I thought about Mrs. Doubtfire as soon as you asked me that. Okay, that's a classic. Yeah, man. <laughs> Where I don't you... know why, but that's what came to mind. Well, he's creative as hell, man. He, he's, he's, you know, he, yeah. he's got it. He's yeah. special. He was, anyway. Rest in peace. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Where can people connect with you? Um, I saw, also, I kind of want to touch on this. I saw, did you work on a music video or something like that? Lately or something like that? And, yes, sir. So you, um, you're in the music game now? <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely about to drop an album. <laughs> but no, nah, um, funny thing, actually, I, I do sing. So I I never thought about like really recording, but I think I want to now. I'm like, yo, I need to just maximize and exhaust every single talent and gift I have before I leave this earth, man. Leave the earth. But, um... Yeah, I, I, the director of the Cuffin' Season series I'm working on, uh, Director D. Baines, shout out, man, if you're listening, um, he is a music video director, big time in Atlanta, and so he was shooting, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar up in New York with Light Skin Keisha? Uh, haven't, I'm going to look her up after this, I haven't heard of her yet. <laughs> yeah, but her, her song is, is kind of thumping, though. Um, Light Skin Keisha and, uh, and uh, uh, DC Young Fly, the comedian. Yep. Yeah, man, they, they were doing a video together, so I came out. Did some production work. We hung out, acted in it a little bit. So it was cool. It was cool. Dope. Yeah, man. So where can people yeah. connect with you when the magazine comes out? Do you, if you have information on when that's going to come out, um, give everybody like all, all the all the things that you that are how they how they find you. Um, my like my Facebook and Instagram the same exact thing is Sean Freeman. That is spelled S E A N. Sean, last name Freeman. F R E E M A N. Uh, on Instagram is actually Sean Freeman and three underscores. Sean Freeman slash slash slash. Um, and that's pretty much it. I think the interview comes out <clears throat> in maybe two or three weeks. So I'll be sure to you know promote that and put it on my page, man. But y'all, anybody listening, thank you so much for not only listening to Aaron and supporting him, but thank you for listening to me. 
Uh, thank you for allowing me to introduce myself to you guys. Please follow me. Let's follow each other. Let's connect, man. Let's build this thing. Sean, it's been a pleasure. Great having you as a guest, man. Hey, thank you so much, brother. All right.